everyone, and welcome to Islam and African American Religious Experience, where we'll d discuss the Nation of Islam and then Sunni Islam. We can start with Marcus Garvey, who set a very nationalistic perspective for African Americans. He led um, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, the UNIA, which was the largest nationalist um, emigrationist campaign ever mounted in the United States. Um, a movement to have African Americans leave America and to go back to Africa. Um, he led this movement himself. He was definitely heavily influenced and intrigued by the philosophy of Booker T. Washington um, and discussed many things um, that held an important sway over um, African Americans, many of them um, starting in 1917. Um, he asserted um, a really independent nationalism, that African Americans are a chosen people selected by God for greatness, as seen in Psalm 68 with Ethiopia, and that God's plan for African Americans can be fulfilled um, once Africa allows and, you know, brings forth and welcomes this emigration out of America again into Africa. Um, he had elaborate offices. Um, rituals, uniforms. Um, he called for a Negro independent nationalism, a nation um, on the continent of Africa. Africa for the Africans was his catchphrase. Be proud of your African race. God made the African race perfect. Um, that, that helps kind of set the scene for this nationalism that we see in some of these Islamic groups for sure. Before we get into the Nation of Islam, we also definitely have to discuss Noble Drew Ali, who founded the Moorish Science Temple in 1913 in Newark, New Jersey. Um, he told his followers that he had a conversation with the King of Morocco, Morocco in North Africa, being the original home of African Americans, um, and gave him these personal instructions to educate African Americans in the religion of Islam. This was his central mission, his calling in life as the last in a line of great prophets before him. Um, he rejected white supremacy, um, and he changed this focus to Moorish Americans or Asiatics. That was the real term for African Americans. They shouldn't be called African Americans anymore, but Moorish Americans or Asiatics. Um, he had himself and his followers wear special clothing with red fezes for men and women wearing long dresses and turbans. And they all had identification cards, which clearly marked them as members. Um, he wanted to bring together um, his followers living in the Americas, Asia, and Africa as a cultural complete whole under one religion. Um, he told his followers to think of themselves as Muslim, as Muslims. Um, of the Moorish Science Temple, but who embraced all of the world's great prophets, including Jesus, Muhammad, the Buddha, Confucius, and of course, Noble Drew Ali himself. And he was considered by his followers to be the reincarnation of the prophet Muhammad. Sadly, he was murdered in 1929 because he rejected profiteering, um, profiting money-making schemes, um, financial gain from those who wanted to sell items um, connected to him and this Asiatic heritage. But he is seen um, to be reincarnated in the world, and he's in each sheikh or chieftain leader who leads a temple associated with this movement, this Moorish uh, science temple movement. Some argue that Master Fard Muhammad, the founder of the Nation of Islam, was one of his many reincarnations of Noble Drew Ali, but of course the Nation of Islam does deny that. Master Fard Muhammad um, was the founder of the Nation of Islam. We, we don't know much about his early life. Um, he does, he, he's very mysterious. He appears in Detroit in the 1930s, selling silk door to door. Um, and he tells everyone that he came from the area where the silk was produced and told many others that he came from Mecca, um, the holiest city on earth for Islam, um, a, a city in Saudi Arabia where the prophet Muhammad was born in 570. But there's other reasons for why it's the holiest city. It's the city that you face for your five daily prayers 
um, as a Muslim. Um, he came to be known as one um, from the tribe of the Prophet Muhammad, the child of a black father and a white mother, so a mixed race, and according to some. Um, he identified African Americans as the true legitimate rulers of the universe, um, and that they were, he was sent by God to find lost African Americans in the United States and to, to restore them to their former glory. So they should not be associated with the U.S., but rather they're lost Asiatics, and Mecca is their true home. He definitely adopted a strict code of ethics um, and morality. Dress modestly, be well-groomed, reject sports, gambling, movies, alcohol, tobacco, avoid few foods like pork, only eat once a day. And he rejected interracial marriage um, because he saw white society as dangerous. He did create a University of Islam in 1930, which taught basic academic subjects along with theology as well. Um, he forbade women to wear um, makeup, and they had their own dress laws, obviously forbade adultery, um, no heels over an inch and a half, and no dancing with anyone aside your husband. And men were taught to protect um, the, the you know their actual organization and their property and to prepare for a race war known as the Armageddon. He mysteriously disappears um, in 1934. Um, we still don't know exactly what happened, if it was deliberate or if it was accidental or if there was a plot to assassinate him and he was killed. We just don't know still to this day. Elijah Poole was his greatest follower. Um, he was actually, um, he, he left Georgia during the Great Migration, that mass movement of African Americans into southern and northern cities from the late 19th century through the mid 20th century with the hope of just more employment and economic opportunities following the end of the Civil War. Um, so moving to urban areas in the south, but also obviously in the north as well. Um, he was a Christian preacher, Elijah Poole, um, but then he eventually found the teachings of Master Fard Muhammad to be very appealing, um, especially because of the discrimination in America and white supremacy. Um, so he did eventually, Elijah Poole did eventually identify Fard as the second coming of Jesus Christ. So they created a very strong bond between the two of them, Master Fard and Elijah Poole. And Fard therefore changed Elijah's name to Elijah Muhammad and authorized him to preach in his name and eventually become his second in command. After Fard's disappearance in 1934, Elijah Muhammad knew he had to leave. Um, if he remained in Detroit, he would also be eliminated or disappear um, just like by, at the hand of his rivals. Um, so he fled to Chicago. Um, he preached, Elijah Muhammad preached that Master Fard was Allah incarnate in the flesh, Allah in human form on earth, and that he himself, Elijah, was the messenger of Allah, commissioned to teach African Americans about their true nature as the original people of the earth, that they were godlike and destined to rule the universe. He did institute a Savior's Day, February 26th, which was Fard's actual birthday. He referred to whites as devils created by a wise yet insane scientist named Dr. Yakum. Allah and the wise scientists, that they construct human history in 25,000 year cycles. One scientist serves as a judge and monitor and allowed for the historical devil race to rule people of African descent for a set number of years. Domination was allowed to happen because African Americans strayed from the true religion of Islam and they had to be punished thus to allow them to eventually return to their greatness. So thus the nation of Islam was created um, to re-educate African Americans about their true nature and religion. Eventually whites would be destroyed um, or some there would be some who would allow to have redemption would occur for them. So his teachings were very apocalyptic. Um, the earth will be purged in fire the faithful of God, those faithful to Allah, the nation of Islam's membership, will build a new nation with a pure government. Allah's creation of the devil, the white race, 
would allow for Allah to show how he how he will eventually conquer evil. And thus a new paradise will begin from that new government um, by the Nation of Islam's membership. Self-sufficiency was definitely a central teaching of the Nation of Islam, expressed through its focus on farms and their own businesses, like restaurants and other ventures. Um, but he did call on the government, um, the American government, to provide funds enough to sustain it for, you know, about 20, 25 years, reparations, something overdue for the wages of, for centuries of, obviously, slave labor that went uncompensated um, itself. So, um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, was identified as the spiritual head of Muslims in the West. And while he was still alive, his new members would write him a letter to their headquarters in Chicago, where I'm um, asking for a new name to replace their slave name given to them, their last name. Until that new name was given, members would use an X. Each local temple had a minister who obviously spread the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings, um, who were assisted by the captains of the Fruit of Islam, a male group. And then the women also had their own group as well, too. The Fruit of Islam would protect the nation of Islam from external threats and internal squabbles and, and fighting. Um, Malcolm Little, so Elijah Poole is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, Malcolm Little becomes Malcolm X. Malcolm Little um, did live a life of crime, was imprisoned. He was released in 1952. Eventually, he became the assistant minister of the Detroit Temple, number one, in 1953. He was extremely charismatic. He definitely knew how to handle himself with all the media exposure that he had. He moved upwards. He was elevated through the ranks and became the second in command. Elijah Muhammad's national spokesperson, actually. But he did witness um, Elijah Muhammad's moral failures, uh, moral and where he couldn't even follow his own moral and ethical guidelines that he himself established. Um, he it said that he knew Elijah Muhammad was committing adultery and fathering children outside of his marriage. Um, and he didn't appreciate how the Nation of Islam did not actively participate in the Civil Rights Movement. So those two reasons led him to break away from the Nation of Islam and convert to more mainline, mainstream Islam called Sunni Islam in 1964. The vast majority of the world's Muslim population is Sunni. It's basically 90% of all Muslims in the world are Sunni, Sunni Muslim. He was silenced by the by Elijah Muhammad um, in late 1963, following the assassination of JFK, and there were already several attempts to kill Malcolm X at that point. Um, but he leaves fully, and he actually participates in the Hajj in 1964. Um, the Hajj is the annual um, pilgrimage to Mecca in Saudi Arabia. All Muslims are commanded to visit Mecca once in their lifetime when they're financially and physically able to do so during the month of hajj the hajj typically gets two to three million people muslims a year muslims from all over the world from all different countries races ethnicities and obviously both genders so on the hajj in 1964 he saw people of all these different races coming together he witnessed equality when he celebrated the hajj he saw cooperation um, he saw how races work together, white and black, and of course others. So that really changed his thinking um, about just racial dialogue and different races working together. And so he quickly fully embraced Sunni Islam. And when he returned, he created the Organization of African American Unity and the Muslim Mosque Incorporated, fully ingrained in the Sunni Islam movement. Unfortunately, he was assassinated in 1965. We still don't know the full story of who was behind, without a shadow of a doubt, um, his assassination. We still don't know, sadly. Upon Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's death, um, his son, Wallace Dean Muhammad, or Imam Warith Dean Muhammad, became the leader of the Nation of Islam. So the son succeeds his father. 
which kind of shocked um, people. Um, this happened in 1979, following the death of Elijah Muhammad. Imam just means a leader, basically. Um, the leader of prayer, the leader of a mosque, the house of worship in Islam, Imam. The moral example, the leader. Um, he changed temples to mosques, um, basically, and he was trying to associate, connect the nation of Islam more with the mainline, mainstream, Sunni, excuse me, Sunni Islam. That was his goal. And so he changed temples to mosques. He removed inappropriate elements and symbols. The stage in a mosque was moved, so the minister was on the same level as the congregation, which is very important in Islam. He focused on the five pillars of Islam. So Shahada, the testimony of faith. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Um, you have the five daily prayers. You have the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. You have zakat or charity. Everyone is commanded to give at least 2.5% um, annually to an organization um, of their choosing. Um, those are just some of the uh, of the five pillars um, of Islam. So we try to connect um, the, these African American Muslims of the Nation of Islam more with the worldwide mainstream um, religion of Islam itself. Um, and he changed the name several times. Um, of the Nation of Islam to the World Community of Islam in the West um, and the American Muslim um, Mission. And then he welcomed um, non-African Americans into his movement. And importantly, he said that Master Fard was not Allah, but simply a Muslim teacher. And Elijah Muhammad was not a divine messenger. Um, he was not the last prophet Muhammad was. Um, so he really changed the nation of Islam. But not many people within the nation of Islam accepted those changes. And so they reverted back to many of the original teachings of the founder, Master Fard Muhammad, and his successor, Eli the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, under the leadership of Louis Walcott, who is Louis Farrakhan, he reverted back to the original teachings. He was actually selected and trained by Malcolm X. He didn't like, again, Warith D. Muhammad's changes to mainstream Islam um, whatsoever, whatsoever. Um, so he wanted to return some of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. He didn't see whites um, as devils, but the seeds of white supremacy were demonic. Um, he was definitely much more politically engaged um, instead of Master Fard and Elijah Muhammad. Um, so he really, really toned down Elijah Muhammad's separation of the races, emigration, let's have a separate nation in America, or let's emigrate back um, to Africa. And the one pillar I didn't say uh, was here that I can mention now is Ramadan. All Muslims are commanded to fast during the ninth month in the Islamic lunar calendar called Ramadan. The fasting is called Psalm, the, the fasting during that month. Um, he actually celebrated that in 1986 and went on the Hajj the year before in 1985. He is known for being anti-Jewish with anti-Semitic rants. Um, unfortunately, oops, I spelled that incorrectly. I apologize, Sem Semitic there. Um, and then supporting probably maybe some Libyan terrorism with Muammar Gaddafi while Gaddafi was still alive. And maybe he played a part in the Malcolm X assassination, actually. Um, there's no definitive proof, but a lot of people have their suspicions, sadly. And he was very successful in organizing the 1995 initial Million Man March in D.C., which actually probably had over a million uh, men following. So quite simple. And he is still alive. Still alive. It was fair time. El Hajj Malik El Shabazz is Malcolm X, and his name change. Um, you are allowed to incorporate the El Hajj at the beginning of your name um, once you've completed the Hajj, that once in your lifetime pilgrimage or journey to Mecca. Um, so he did that, um, and thus changed his name accordingly. And uh, of course, the other parts too. Um, he definitely moved away from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad by becoming a Sunni Muslim um, and more connection with the world community of Islam. 
because again, at that high, she saw equality um, among different among different races. It wasn't just fake. It wasn't just an illusion. There was a unity um, within the community of people there um, in Mecca. There's this whole different social and cultural, um, racial and ethnic backgrounds, but there was a cooperation of all the races there. Um, by the end of the 20th century, there are over 1 million African-American Muslims making Islam one of the fastest growing traditions in the African-American community and in the U.S. Um, in general, too. All right, everyone. Oh, and then Islam in Africa. So um, Muhammad was born in 570 CE and dies in 632 um, in all in Saudi, all in what we call Saudi Arabia today. He was born in Mecca and he dies in Medina. Um, which is about 270 miles north of Mecca. Um, Islam is, has already spread into Ethiopia, North Africa, and then East Africa by the 800s, and then into West Africa, thus definitely making it a part of the eventual slave trade itself. Five to 15% of enslaved Africans um, would have been influenced, at least by Islam. That means 200,000. Not saying that they were Muslim, but at least influenced, impacted by Islam, for them being obviously forcibly remo removed out of Africa and brought to the quote-unquote new world during the slave trade. So 200,000 is a big, obviously a big number. And there are some examples there. Uh, we know, you know, there are obviously slaves who were Muslim based off their names from Georgia and North Carolina. You see two examples and based off um, the, their limited knowledge maybe of Arabic, and then them needing to pray um, several times a day. And then African-American, more, you know, mainstream Islam. Um, you, you have three examples here. The Islamic Mission of America um, by Sheikh Dawood Ahmed, um, or also known as the State, the State Street Mosque or the Islamic Brotherhood. And then you have Dural Islam, um, which unfortunately no longer exists. Um, it had it in its in its height. It had over 30 mosques, 25 to 30 mosques located throughout the U.S., Canada, and the Caribbean, with uh, Brooklyn kind of as its major headquarters. It did accept the Black Power Movement and former Nation of Islam members, with a focus on studying Arabic, the Quran, so on and so forth. And then you have the American Muslim Mission. This is Imam Worth D. Muhammad. So he finally has to leave and split permanently from the Nation of Islam once there's a strong enough amount of people that want to return back to the original teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of Louis Farrakhan. So this is where he goes. He goes to the American Muslim mission um, itself. Again, he was the son of Elijah Muhammad um, himself, but um, he was determined to connect back to, you know, Sunni mainstream um, teachings. So he removed the distinctive dress of dark suits and bow ties. He did not have the fruit of Islam um, any longer or the original theology where Master Fard was God, Allah, and Elijah Muhammad, his father, was, his, was the final prophet of Allah. That was all removed, that whites were the devils separating, you know, the races. Um, rather, he created a, a council of imams responsible for overseeing the movement's teachings and, and, and structure, um, but it has since been dismantled um, in 1985, this group itself. So now there are just um, different mosques, different mosques throughout the country, throughout America. Um, Masjid or mosque, um, the house of worship in Islam that you can associate yourself with um, is the understanding of Islam in America. All right, everyone, have a great day.